Morning, glory, and evening, grace, brethren and sisters. Good to have you all along with us here again on this uh, Thursday evening to uh, study the Word together, our uh, midweek uh, study. Exciting times, I know, in the Lord, I believe, in my own uh, personal heart. Thank God for what He's done for me. I know we have the uh, coronavirus pandemic going on right now, but when the Lord is still in control and His people can still have peace, amen, that's what He promised us that uh, we should have peace and uh, to uh, do His work, to do His will. For the Lord is our comforter, He's our protector, our shield in times of trouble. And thank the Lord for, uh, for all that He's done for us and all that He is going to do. Uh, certainly hope that you've been uh, praying for us, been in prayer one for another, that uh, we would all do our part to build the kingdom of God. I hope what we do here, what we do here should not be the beginning and the end of what you do for the Lord or even what I do for the Lord, but just something to help us along, to keep us encouraged. As we know, the Lord's work, it is inexhaustible. Just how His Word is, in, is inexhaustible and excited about uh, this uh, week's, uh, this Thursday's mid-study. That's what we're going to be looking at, actually. It's just kind of going over a bit of... Uh, a bit of some general things about studying the Bible, <clears throat> but excited about it. Uh, kind of just a big part of the ministry, you know, that the Lord, that the Lord has uh, has me in, and so uh, so you uh, stay tuned with us, and hopefully, will be a blessing to you this evening. As the Word of God is, Amen. Not because I preach it, not because it's from me, because it certainly isn't from me, but just because it's a help and a blessing, Amen. It's the one, the one thing that we have from God that can help us. So we'll get to right into our things here. Uh, just a couple of announcements, though. Actually, a couple of a couple of big announcements. One reason that we are so excited. The Lord uh, kind of uh, pressed it upon my heart here a few days ago. Then I believe it was actually a Tuesday morning, I believe. Yeah, like Tuesday morning or yesterday morning. Actually, I believe it was mostly like yesterday morning. I'm sorry, Wednesday morning. The Lord confirmed it in my heart. <clears throat> and... Uh, and I think a lot of it has to, a lot of it I don't think maybe has to do because of, because we have the coronavirus and so many people are stuck at home. And then also, you know, I already do have a bit of a congregation in northern New York as well. And then also just, I believe it's because it's a needed thing for this day and time, is we are going to have an online revival like we do here. Going to have that coming up on, uh, going to do that the uh, last week of May, the last week, I'm sorry, the last week of April, rather, in just a couple of weeks, the last week of April. Going into the uh, 1st of May. Let me run and look at my calendar right over here right quick. It's right behind me. And I'll be right back to give you those exact dates. Yes, and that is April, April the 27th to May 1st, April 27th to May 1st, so that is just a uh, couple of, uh, not this coming, you know, that won't be next week, but, you know, the week after, so it'll be here really quick on us, and we'll be uh, putting those up Monday to Friday on uh, at the uh, evening time. They'll probably be posted, the videos will probably be available about, about 7, about, uh, yeah, I'd say about 7 Eastern, 6 Central, 6, 6 Central Standard Time is when they uh, should be available. So uh, take a look at, at those if you would. <clears throat> no, just I'll be praying for us. Hopefully that'll be a blessing to people. I know some folks have have done that. I know a couple of preachers have kind of done that. Like I said, it's just been a blessing. I've listened to other pastors of other churches and all of the missionaries do them. Of course, a lot of people I know who are stuck at home. And that is one good thing about this time is we can observe the Lord, observe the Word of God. And observe uh, his things. <clears throat> and so I'll be praying for us there as we uh, get ready to do that. Of course, our regular videos that uh, that we have until then will still be available. Like uh, we'll be here on Sunday continuing our series in the book of Psalms. I think we're on the seventh verse of the second Psalm. We started that last Sunday. So uh, be there with us. And then, of course, the following Tuesday and Thursday, we'll still have our midweek studies. Uh, that Thursday, we will probably do about 99% sure we will probably actually go over an article that I'm writing now for this coming week's newsletter about revival, having a heart for revival. That'll kind of springboard us into the ne into that next week. Of course, you know, that Sunday, we'll still go through the, our Psalm series. And then Monday to Thursday, 
we'll uh, we'll be uh, preaching some uh, preaching sermons Monday to Friday. And so pray for me. I've uh, I've only done something like that once in my life, and it wore me out back when I was on deputation to go to Ontario, Canada. Back in uh, 20, I guess that would have been 2015, yeah, 2015, yeah, 2015 uh, the church that I was a member of when I was in the Navy, I actually preached a missions conference there, started Sunday morning and went through Wednesday, and that's the only time I've ever preached a series like that, and it was quite tiring on me, partly because I was, I was, I know I'm still pretty fat, but I was even fatter then, like y'all know, I just got to pray for me, I have cholesterol problems, and uh, I've, uh, <clears throat> So that is going to be a bit challenging for me, both physically and mentally. So keep me in your prayers, of course. We're going to start a church here in a few months. So, uh, so you know, I'll have to be used to preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night at the minimum anyway. So y'all pray for us. Be much in prayer. You know, I don't want that just to be for me, but to be for all our listeners. Amen. All of you out there, like I know other preachers and all even pastors of churches. I know I've been listening to us. I know it gives you an opportunity of some preaching and all, and I hope it's refreshing to you. To all the men of God out there, and you know, women of God as well. All the, uh, all the, all of God's people, whomever, whomever you uh, might be, that uh, we'd be a blessing and help to you. And so, do remember all those things as well. Keep, uh, like I said, me and my family in your prayers. So my wife went to a physician just a couple of days ago. Said she's been having some abdomen pain. So please pray that gets resolved. My daughter as well. She still has some digestive issues. Remember her. And the young man that I have um, been uh, mentioning to be in prayer for, who lives in a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, do keep praying for him. He's got a special need as well. Talked to him last night, so he does appreciate your prayers, I know, and that's, you know, just what he needs. He lives in a really, he has a difficult situation. He lives in a really, really difficult part of the world where Bible-believing Christians are it's almost trying to find another Bible-believing Christian. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. He lives in a very, very difficult part of the world and has some tough circumstances. Very fired up young man, just, uh, you know, loves God. I mean, God's, and that's, God wants to use him, and that's certainly why he's going through what he's going through. Like I told him last night, he said, you're living a 21st century Job, or like a 21st century Apostle Paul. The devil's just after you because you are such a such a godly and upright man. So y'all pray for him. Just pray God give him grace and resolve the issues that he has. Amen. And so we certainly do appreciate all of that. Remember us, as uh, hopefully we get back traveling here on deputation, raising our final bit of support. <clears throat> here in the next couple of months so we're able to move and as always you know need to pray one for another like i was just reading a book today says we need to encourage each other whenever we can you know the world and you know all the people you know they put us down enough we hear enough negativity us as people of god we need to unite we need to love one another pray for one another and encourage one another so that's just it was on my heart today as well. I just want to encourage the brethren and sistren, not because I'm anybody, anybody great, but I'm just an old sinner saved by God's grace, and that's what we want to do, amen. Just produce more people of God, people that love God, people that want to be used by Him, amen. We'll go ahead and have a word of prayer here, and then uh, we'll get into what God has for us. Our Father, we sure do love you this evening. We thank you for the innocence of sin. Thank you for your word and uh, what it means to us, the way it helps us pray for all the needs among us. Pray for uh, my health, my family's health, that you'd be with us, Lord God, all those out there listening, things that uh, that they go through, things that they're facing for the young man we've been praying about. Certainly do pray for him, that you just bless him and help him in a special way, Lord God. Just uh, uh, the issues that he has, Lord, just resolve them. We know you're, you're the victor, and we just uh, trust you for your promises, Lord, that are found in your word. And just be with this time that we have here this evening. Just uh, bless your people with peace, Lord. Help us learn more about your word. Just be a blessing, be a help. That's just what our heart's desire is. See more people go forward for the cause of Christ, Lord. For it's in Christ's name that we humbly pray. Amen and amen. So to get us started here, we will look at a couple of uh, a couple of verses here. This is actually going to be kind of kind of be two different halves to this that we're going to get to uh, here today. It's not going to be very long. I would I would I would be shocked if we went longer than uh, than thirty minutes. But uh, two different halves, though. The first is going to be a bit of a devotional type thought, just the Bible, you know, what the Bible means to us as humans, as believers. Then the second half is going to kind of be like uh, giving you some Bible study tips. I've actually got some books and things behind me. We're just going to go over about some, uh, maybe some of the tools and things that we can have to help us be better students of God's Word. And let's get it uh, started off here. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse number 29 says, Is not my word like a fire, like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Now we'll go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 4, and verse number 16. It says, uh, 
Verse number 12, I apologize, Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And uh, if I had to give this a title, I would just give a... Give it, I'd give it this title, maybe a bit of a catchy type sounding thing. A.V. Sword. A.V. obviously standing for the authorized version. And then we have sword, which is what the Bible is referred to, a sword. A.V. Sword. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word and to help us here this evening. Now, if we wish to have the power of God, we must acknowledge the importance of God's word. And I've, uh, I've said that probably on the, even on these videos here already. You know, the Word of God is what we have. That, that's, that's what we have of the Lord. You know, the Lord didn't give us a video. He didn't give us a cassette tape, a CD. He gave us His Word in a book, the Bible. That's the one thing that we have. That's how we can be like God here in New Testament times. You know, God doesn't use prophets anymore. I know some of these charismatic Pentecostals and all, uh, that they, they use some of that stuff, claiming they're prophets, claiming that God has given them, has spoken to them in dreams and told them to do this, that, and the other. But that's not how God works in our New Testament times. Here we have the completed Word of God. The completed Word of God. It was completed in AD 96 when the Apostle John completed the book of Revelation. And that's how God speaks to us. Like we use that terminology. Bible, believing Christian. Bible, believer. Because you can tell when somebody is a Bible believing Christian when they are following the Word of God and when they're following something that isn't scriptural. You know, like uh, like we went over that uh, that word is actually in our in our in our verse here in Hebrews. Like we did that video. I think that was one day last week. Like when we went over biblical judgment. You know how we use the word of God to test and try things. Like it says there in the latter in the latter part of that of the, of this verse here in Hebrews four twelve, talking about the word of God. It says is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Like we said that in those videos. Like really biblical judgment. That's what that is. That is discerning. That is discerning what is true and what is false. What is the truth and what is a lie? Because like it says all through the Bible. You know the Bible tells us there's false prophets. You know, that's even in the Old Testament, like like Isaiah and Micah and uh, Hosea, you know, they dealt, they dealt with false prophets like Hosea. You know, that was a big issue for the northern kingdom of Israel in his time. That's what he said. You know, we have priests, you know, that are not men of God. We have priests that are spreading false lies who do not live right lives. And we have the word of God to test and try things. So we find out, you know, what is biblical and, you know, what is not biblical, what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, and what is not. And so we must stick to the Word of God. Like it says in Luke chapter 8, verse number 11, the seed is the Word of God. That's where it all starts, amen. You know, like just, uh, you know, just plain and simple here by way of introduction. You don't want to have a successful life. You know, you've got to make much of God's Word. You got to make much of his word. And now we're going to look here at uh, <clears throat> at about 10 things here. And uh, we're just going to mention these. Like I said, this isn't going to be long. I don't really plan for it to be long. I really didn't study and prepare for it to be all that long. Our kind of midweek videos, if we can, we just like to make them just around, you know, 30 minutes, you know, to encourage the you know, people of God, and then on Sundays, you know, like Sunday morning especially, we might preach a little bit longer, because I know people have, uh, do have things and all to do. Well, the great thing, though, about technology, I know you can pause and come back later if you'd like, <clears throat> but in the book of Acts, to get us started here, in Acts 2.37, it says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? See, they had been preaching. Peter and the apostles there, they had been preaching, and the word of God pricked their hearts. And that's the first thing that we look at, the conviction of sin. 
the conviction of sin. That's what the Word of God brings. That's why a lot of people don't like it. That's why I didn't like it when I was lost. Uh, like uh, the church that I was raised in that I went into until I was 12 in my, especially in my latter years of that church, the last two or three years, that got to be a bit more of a, of a liberal church. That wasn't a church that had a lot of strong preaching. In my family, we started going to a Bible Baptist in Landrum where my first cousin is the pastor, Dr. Tommy Turner. And, you know, just being honest, I didn't like the man because he was too strict. The reason I didn't like him was because he preached the Bible and the Bible brings conviction. See, that's why the world doesn't like the Bible. Like me and the, the young man I asked folks to pray for, like we were talking last night here in the here in 21st century, you know, Western society like North America and Western Europe, you know, they don't like the Bible anymore. You know, they, they, they became what Eastern Europe was back in the days of communism. They don't want the Word of God anymore. They won't have anything to do with it. Like our public school systems, they don't want the Word of God. Our courthouses don't want the Word of God. Businesses don't want the Word of God. People don't like it because it brings conviction. And they don't want to have anything to do with it because the Word of God brings conviction. But conviction, though, is what we have to have. I'm glad a man of God preached to me. <clears throat> and I got saved. That's what causes people to get saved is through the conviction, the preaching of the word of God. Like these people here, it's going to prick people's heart and they're going to say, hey, what must I do to be saved? What do I need to do? See, and just like in our walk with God, you know, even now, that's why I make so much of the Word of God, because as we're going to look at, our, at a lot of our points here, talk about the Word of God cleanses us. It helps us live that righteous life. Keeps us pure, keeps us clean, just like a, when a person takes a shower, you know, they get clean by the Word of God. See, that's what the Word of God does. First Peter chapter 1. I've actually got two verses to look at here for this point. First one's going to be in the book of First Peter, and chapter number 1, and verse number 23. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23, actually we're going to look at this one first since I just opened to it. James 1.18, also the other verse here, James 1.18, says, Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And now we'll look at 1 Peter 1.23, where it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. See also the word of God, it gives life-giving power. Just like whenever a person a person first gets saved, you know, how can uh, how can they live that Christian life? That's what worries a lot of people, especially people who come from rougher backgrounds, like people who have been alcoholics or have been drug addicts and have lived in ways that they shouldn't. They say, well, if, if I get saved... <clears throat> How am I going to live it? You know, how am I going to go to church on a regular basis? How am I going to be one of them Christians? Um, how am I going to abstain from worldliness, from the sin in the world? By the Word of God. You stay in the Word of God. That's how you live it. Uh, you can't live it in your flesh, uh, but you've got to live it in the Word of God. You go and you read after, like like y'all know, y'all have heard me say it many a time, like you go and you read after great men and women of God who the Lord used. Uh, what was their secret? so to speak. It was simply the Word of God. They made much of the Word of God. <clears throat> they spent more time in the Word of God than they did anything else. That's that life-giving power that it gives. It's also here in the book of Romans, chapter number 10. Romans 10 and verse number 17. So then faith cometh by hearing... And hearing by the Word of God. <clears throat> the Word of God here gives us saving faith. You want to get saved? You want to give somebody saving faith? You've got to give them the Word of God. That's what gets it done. That's the only thing that will get it done is the Word of God of God, like we mentioned there, like a lot of people in, in this day and time, they want to give even so-called preachers, they want to add to the Word of God, or take away from the Word of God. Huh? You've got to preach the Word. That's what the Lord uses. Just like the Philippian jailer here in Acts 16, verses 30 to 32. <clears throat> the Philippian jailer talking about Paul and Silas. 
he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. See right there, thank God there was some household, some household salvation there. That's the saving faith that the word of God gives. <clears throat> Well, that the Word of God gives. That's what we have to have to see people saved. It's simply the Word of God. Like in this day and time, as, I, as I've as i said in some previous videos, that's the, that's the major problem with the newly evangelicals. They want to use everything else and, and anything else to get people saved. You can use a bunch of gimmicks. You can lower your standards and, and turn your church into a circus or turn your church into a rock concert. And I know you may get a lot of people in a church like that, but the problem is nobody is going to get saved by that. It is the Word of God that gets people saved. And that is saving faith. And also it gives prevailing faith, as we'll see here in the book of Mark in chapter number 11. Mark chapter number 11. And verse number... 24, Mark 11, 24, where it says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. See also here, the word of God, it gives prevailing, prevailing faith. See, I'm glad, amen, that the word of God, it can give you faith beyond anything that the world has, anything that the world throws at you. No matter no matter what it is the world throws your way or what you might go through, the Word of God gives that prevailing faith. Just like it says there in Mark also, kind of expounding on that in the book of Luke chapter 11 and verse number 13, it says, If ye then being evil... Know how to get good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? How wonderful that is there. We should desire the Holy Spirit. Have that desire. That's what you'll get from reading the Word of God. If you just began reading it, uh, it, it, will, it, will, it will taste very, very sweet to you. And pretty soon, it will begin to consume you. And you'll have the attitude and the mindset that you just cannot get enough of the Word of God. You cannot get enough of the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of faith that it will produce if you get into it. It'll give you that prevailing faith. And then after you get the prevailing faith, this next point here is what will happen. Say so it's just like a process. Like it says in John chapter 7 and verse number 17. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. See, the word of God there will give you Christian evidence. There will be some Christian evidence in your life. People will know that you're a Christian. You'll be different than the world. You'll act different than the world. You'll have a better spirit than what the world has. It'll produce Christian evidence in your life. And also here in 1 John chapter number 5. 1 John chapter number 5 and verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See, the word of God will bring victorious faith. Victory, that's over the world. You need some victory in your life. You've got to stay in the Word of God. If there's somebody, if there's a group of people that's getting you down, somebody that you work with, somebody you're related to, an acquaintance or whatever it is, get in the Word of God. If uh, if the world is tempting you, if the world is enticing you, or you know the devil is tempting you and trying to get you to do things that you ought to not do, stay in the Word of God. Second Peter 1 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these 
you might be partakers of the divine nature. See, the Word of God is divine. It goes above what this world has, above the world's nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You want to escape that worldly lust, you've got to get in the Word of God and remain in it. And see, like we kind of already mentioned this point here in Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse number 9, it says, Where, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto, according to the word of God. Like David writing there, he says you want to be cleansed. That's our seven point cleansing. Want to be cleansed, you've got to get into the word of God. You've got to make much of the word of God. Like I actually said this before, on a video, I want to say that I said this when I preached that Sunday message, Biblical Holiness. But I mentioned this story here, like about a, uh, like about a preacher, a great powerhouse preacher. He became like the poster boy of the Bible college that he graduated from. But then he got out of God's will when he got in the world. And that preacher, he tells everybody that he meets, he says, I'm going to tell you why I got out of the will of God. And I want you to tell if my name ever comes up, you know, talk about me getting out of God's will out of the ministry. I want you to tell all of them why I got out. Simply because I quit doing my daily devotions. I quit doing my daily Bible reading. <laughs> You know, I just, <coughs> excuse me, I thought I was so good, you know, and I just thought that I was so great that I didn't need to read the Word of God on a daily basis. You know, I didn't need to, I didn't need to take that time, you know, and just read the Word of God to myself. You know, of course, that man studied the Bible, you know, whenever he preached meetings and all, but he said, I just quit my own personal daily devotions, that personal time with God, and that's what got me out of the Lord's will. Because, see, nobody is great enough that they don't need the Word of God. Now, so continuing on here, almost finished here with our devotional part. The book of Acts, chapter number 20. Book of Acts, chapter number 20, it says. And verse number 52. See, that can't be right. It's not 52. Yeah. 32. Sorry, I have sloppy handwriting. I can't even read my own handwriting sometimes. Acts 20, 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. See, eighthly here, the eighth point, character building. The word of God will help you build character. You want to be a loyal person? You want to be an honest person? Get into the Word of God. Spend much time in the Lord's Word, and it will build you character. And I like also what that verse there says. It says, And to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So you stay in the Word of God, and you become a great person of this book, and you will have an inheritance much greater than anything that this world has. Because see, that character building, that goes along with it. You talk, you hear that a lot. Not as much as you used to, maybe, but you're about that. Somebody that's got good character, a good, honest, loyal person, be a person of the book. You'll have that great character, and you'll have that inheritance. And then, uh, my ninth point here, going back to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, that verse there is actually... Right next to our other verse. Yeah, Psalm 119 and verse number Psalm 119 and verse number 130. 130. Actually a little bit away from it there. The 130th verse of Psalm 119 says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. See, it gives wisdom. Wisdom, amen. All oh, that's much needed in this day and time. Godly, godly wisdom. See, it says there it gives wisdom to the simple. Because, see, you don't have to have a fancy education. You don't have to have a fancy education to live for God or to be something for God. But you do need to be a student of the Bible, a student of the Word of God. See, just like Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, the Word of God brings completeness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that means complete, may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. See, the Word of God can give a simple person wisdom, yes. You don't have to have a college degree to be a student of the Bible. That's great if you do. It can be a help if you're a person that has read and studied in the past. But you do have to be a student, though, of the Bible. See, you don't get you don't get you don't get great godly wisdom just by spending five minutes in this book. The simple can get wisdom from this book, but just like anything else, you've got to put time into it. You got to spend time in the Word of God, and that's what'll happen if you do what these verses here say. That's what'll happen. You get into this book; it convicts you. But you want, you want your life to be better. You want your life to be what it ought to be. You stay in this book. You keep reading this book and then you become a student of this book like we're about to talk about. You start using Bible dictionaries, Bible encyclopedias, some good commentaries and all. And you listen to some good preaching and some teaching uh, videos. And it'll change your life being becoming a student of the Bible you know, changed my life when I became a student of this book. It completely changed my life by spending hours in the Word of God. Then our last point here, and then we'll get into our second half. John chapter number 15 and verse number 1. Actually, John 15, 11, not 1, but John 15, 11. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. See, this book here, it'll give you joy. It'll give you joy, amen, like nothing else has before. How wonderful it is. What kind of joy, like I said, when I became a student of the Bible, it completely, completely changed my life. Very, very thankful for it. Love the Word of God. I said, anybody great that God has ever used, they've loved this book and they've spent they've spent time in it. They've spent countless, count, countless hours in the Word of God. Now, as I've said before, we kind of go into our second half, kind of go along what I just said. You know, most people, most people, and even most, you know, most preachers will not study as much as I, won't study as much as I do, because that's just part of my calling, the same way God really called me to do two things. He called me to be a church planner, and he called me to instruct people with the Word of God. He called me to write the commentaries that I write, to do videos like this, to put out a newsletter. You know, God called me to be a church planner, and he called me also to be a Bible teacher, to help other people be a student of God's Word, like I did that video as well. Just, I guess that was like, I believe that was last Tuesday, like I did that, that a video about having the gift that God has given you. And that's just a gift that God has given me to do things like this, you know, to help other people be students of God's Word. And, uh, well, how important is it here? We're talking all about here, about studying the Bible and, uh, and everything. Exactly how important is it? Uh, like, uh, well, like, look here, like we mentioned, great men of God made much of this book. The Apostle Paul, whenever he was in jail, he was in jail when he wrote this uh, pastoral epistle of 2 Timothy. And look at what he told Timothy. Well, he might not have per se been in a jailhouse, but he was at least under house arrest because of because of being uh, because of you know trying to win the Gentile nations, Gentile people to the Lord. He says the cloak that I left at Troas. Cloak there means coat. That's just an old word for coat. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus when thou comest, bring with thee. He says, I need a coat. It's cold. But look at also what he said here. And the books, but especially the parchments. And the Apostle Paul, you know, is the man who we're told to intimidate in the book to, in, to, uh, to imitate. The man that we're supposed to be like is the Apostle Paul. He said, when you come, you bring a coat. You bring me a coat. Also bring me the books and the parchments. The parchments there are the Bible, you know, the Bible that they had up to that point, you know, which would have been the Old Testament. And then he might, you know, he probably had at least the four Gospels or so there and the book of Acts, maybe. 
He said whenever he was in jail, he said, bring me the books and the Bible. That's how much of a student the Apostle Paul was of the Bible. That's how much he loved to read. That's how much he loved to study because, like we've been saying, you know, obviously he knew it. He knew it arguably better than anybody else, better than anybody other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said, bring me the books. Bring me the Bible so that I can study. See, that certainly is a very, that's a very, very, the great trait there, a great trait of a, of a, of a great person of God, man or man of God or lady of God. So we're going to give you some tips here. And I'll say I've got some things here that, uh, that I'm going to share with you as well. First of all here, obviously, have a good study Bible. A good study Bible. A good, um, obviously, the King James Version. The only thing that we used in Aaron, inspired Word of God. Yes, I'm glad to say that I was raised that way, but that's also a conviction that I had. The only thing that we promote, and that is uh, the only thing that uh, we recommend, because all the other things are all the other things are wrong. The modern translations they've done nothing but damage to the work of God. It's like I was talking with a brother last night, like you know, back like around the 1980s. Whenever, uh, you know, whenever they these modern translations, like the NIV and the RSV and the American Standard and all started to get big, eh? they've done nothing but corrupt Christianity. And that's why we have all this newly evangelical trash out there now. But a good study Bible, and I'll show you a few here. Like I personally use the Companion Bibles. You can tell I've only, I've only had this Bible about a uh, almost two years now, but I have used it so much. It looks like it's about 20 years old. I've got tape and all on it. But this here is a burgundy, is a burgundy, uh, burgundy hard back. You can, uh, of course, uh, now some Christian, like Christian bookstores, you can just physically go into now are becoming very scarce. Like I know they had Lifeway Christian Bookstore. I know that was, I don't know if that was anywhere else in America. I know that was in the Southeast. But they do still have an online store. But uh, like uh, the Companion Bibles, what I use, this, uh, the notes in this was done by uh, Dr. E.W. Bullinger. He lived from about the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. And uh, this uh, this study Bible here is very is very advanced, so to speak. It's uh, it has a lot of uh, a lot of good things in it, a lot of apologetics and uh, and interpretations and uh, and things in it. But like for example, here just to go show you some things here, the uh, some good things in here. It actually has the Hebrew alphabet, like the Hebrew alphabet on that page there. Like that's one thing he does. He shows a lot of books, a lot of the uh, books there, in a lot of in a lot of the words there, what they mean in Hebrew and in Greek. And I uh, like this here's really good as well. Like uh, like this is the starter for the book of Genesis. He gives an outline, like a pretty detailed outline there. Like you can see that, like I'm going through my series on the book of Psalms now. This is a, one of the, like the main, the, the thing that I use, you know, for the for the broad outline is this right here. Then, you know, like in my, you know, preaching sermons, you know, I add, like I add my own notes, my own exposition, you know, to preach and to be tr practical with people. But that is uh, the Companion Bible. Got a couple more here. Like this one is also very popular, like the Thompson Chain this is one of the most popular, like this is one that I got. This is uh, one of the most inexpensive, uh, inexpensive um, uh, kinds of the Thompson chain. This is just vinyl right here. See, just a plain burgundy. Then on the side, it says Thompson chain. Like you can get this in a like cowhide, which would be a bit more expensive. I got this on sale at a Christian bookstore that is no longer open in Spartanburg, South Carolina either. One that was in the mall up there. Um, like this has a lot of Bible helps in it. All the ones in this Bible are actually at the back, like all the notes and things. Like uh, concordance. And like here, like here, for example, I like get some archaeological you know, like some archaeological supplement about things here, like the, like, um, like the exchange of property and like a lot of the laws and things that they had in Israel. Like here, like Memphis, which was the capital of Egypt, like where my finger is there. Now, like you saw some of the pictures there, that goes over like some of the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the land. 
etc. And this here is like an an, an an analysis of books here, like you see here, like the uh, the Song of Solomon, like kind of like similar, you know, like to what uh, Doctor Bollinger has in the Companion Bible. Like it kind of says here, like who the author is, like Solomon. Then says this is you know it's like an Oriental poem. Then the synopsis, the key thoughts there. Some of the key passages, like it says here, the companion passage, which is the 45th Psalm. The 45th Psalm is a uh, is a uh, is a psalm that goes along with the uh, with the Song of Solomon. It talks about like the heavenly bridegroom and the bride, like the marriage supper, you know, that Solomon talks about there with his wife. So really good help there. And like also, like if you're uh, really interested, like in biblical languages, like the Keyword Study Bible, the Keyword Study Bible. Like the way that like you would use this Bible here is like uh, like say here this is the book of Psalms like uh, like you see the word house there and like what it means in Hebrew like where my finger is like it's one thousand four it's number one thousand four in the Hebrew dictionary like you would go there to a house and look it up for one thousand four. Maybe one more page, I should be there. Yeah, and here it is, like house, you know, like how would how you would spell house in Hebrew. This is really small print. Here, like uh bola is how you say it in Hebrew. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing there. It's actually um Bayeth. Bayeth is how you spell it there in Hebrew. A house in the greatest variety of applications, like especially the family. You know, or that can mean court, you know, like a courthouse. So that can have something to do with your family, like a daughter or the door or like a dungeon, you know, in Hebrew. Things of that nature. Like I'll hold this up here. Like you can see the variety of words and like uh, the Hebrew there. And like the uh, the Hebrew definitions of these. So if you're interested in biblical languages, that is uh, a really really good help. In continuing uh, on, continuing on with some things here, and we do have other commentaries and things we're going to uh, we're like have. But have a good study Bible though. That's really just the beginning. Like if uh, you wanted to read through the Bible in a year, you would need to read four chapters a day. Read four chapters a day, and that's something that you can't go wrong with. Like it says in John fifteen three, now ye are clean through the word of, which I have spoken unto you. Like we said there, you want to live a clean life, stay in the word of God. I would recommend, though, if you are going to read through the Bible in a year, I would recommend that you use like a study Bible and like uh, and at least read like the notes in that. You know, like I said, I use Dr. Bullinger's The Companion Bible. Like to hold that up here, like you're seeing there, like all the notes that he has. He probably has more notes than just about anybody else does with a study Bible. But, you know, at least, you know, read that. It gives you some description of things, because obviously, you know, the Bible, you know, was originally written in Hebrew and Greek, and they have a lot of different customs, you know, than we have, you know, like lots of different customs and all, you know, than we do. And like some people I know aren't fans, just to kind of mention this here, some people are not fans of books and things like study Bibles, you know, they just say, well, the Bible's the only thing that you need, you know, that is a very, very ignorant statement to just say, oh, all we need is the Bible, because everybody's human, that's how God made humans to need help, you know, whenever we were babies, you know, somebody had to feed us, you know, somebody had to change our clothes and things, and, you know, even growing up, you know, becoming older kids, you know, you still need teachers, you know, you need parents, you need tutors, and, you know, just like with any other with any other profession, you know, you go work any kind of job. You got to get trained on that job. That's what, you know, being a student of the Bible is, you know, you get trained by other people. You know, it's like preaching. You know, we have preachers. You know, that's really all a book is. You know, that's really just preaching, you know, when it's printed form. You know, just like with my videos, like I went over uh, this. Uh, this this is, a, is an article that I put out in one of my newsletters about a month or so ago. You know, that's really all preaching is. Like I've heard that term before. I mean, I'm sorry, all, uh, all writing books and things are. You know, that's really just preaching in the printed form, but it's a great help. You know, that's just how we are as humans. You know, me in my mind, I have a pretty good brain, you know, but me left to myself, you know, I'm extremely limited. If I just read straight to the Bible, you know, all of us, you know, we learn from men that have gone on before us, you know, that have learned a lot that God has blessed, 
you know, to be to be educators in the, uh, you know, in the field of theology. But have a good study Bible. If you want to read the Bible through in a year, you need to read four chapters a day. Like I'd recommend a uh, at least a study Bible, but I'd also recommend to, I'd recommend you to do that with a commentary also, with a good commentary. And we're going to mention that as well. But uh, set aside time to study the Word of God. You know, that's I know that's the really big kicker there with being a student of the Word of God. Uh, you know, just can't find the time. Just can't uh, be consistent with it. But like it says here, like in Isaiah chapter 50 and uh, verse number 4, it says, The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. Probably the two best times for somebody to study the Bible, you know, like I'd say layman, as in somebody, you know, who also works a sec somebody who also works a secular job. Like if you work a uh, a secular job and you work the first shift, probably the best thing to do would be to read it in the morning or later at night time, because your brain is more rested at those times. As soon as you get up in the morning, you have had that probably be my first suggestion to you. But I mean, I know we all have things to do. You have kids, you have activities and all. <clears throat> but uh, morning, though, is probably the best time. You know, you get up in the morning and, uh, you know, your brain is fresh. You know, like the majority of folks, you know, they drink a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, you know, to get some caffeine in their system or an energy drink. You know, first thing in the morning, you know, maybe get up, get up at least uh, 30 minutes or an hour early and, uh, you know, go through the Bible, you know, just go through the Bible. Like I said, read it with some good study notes with a commentary or something. Or like I said, in the evening, whenever you're winding down, you know, that really I'd recommend both. You know, I'd, I'd just say it right there. I highly, highly 100 percent. I recommend both. Can't get in the word of God too much. You know, can't get in the Word of God too much. You know, do it in the morning and do it in the evening as well. You know, like whenever you get off of work, you know, after you unwind, you know, eat eat uh, eat dinner or supper, whichever one, whichever one you call it in the evening meal. You know, whenever you unwind, open up that Bible again, you know, read it again. You want to be a serious student of the Word of God, you can't go wrong in the morning and in the evenings. I know you may not be able to do that every single day. Like I said, you know, we all have lives. We have, you know, different job responsibilities. People have families. You have children. You have other things to do. But carve out that time, though. You know, like I always say, people can find time for things they want to do. You know, people want to get down to the mall when they have a sale. They make time. Somebody want to watch a ball game. They make the time. You know, you got to walk the dog. You know, you make time to walk the dog or, you know, play with the cat or whatever. Make time for the Word of God. You cannot go wrong doing it. So set aside some time to study the Word of God. At least a couple of hours a day. And as we said there, have good study tools. And I will go into some of the other things that we have. The study tools there, like we mentioned the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 4.13. He told Timothy, bring me the books. Have some good study tools. You know, a pen, a pencil, and some paper. If you use a pen or a pencil and then some paper. Like me personally, I like taking notes in my Bible. Said, so, you know, that's just something that I like to do. I think most people ought to do it. Like, uh, like I said, you know, they have customs and some languages, you know, in the olden times that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, you know, that are, that are, that we don't use now. Like in the book of, uh, First, uh, like in the book of Song of Solomon, uh, chapter number one, and like uh, and like uh, verse number five, like it talks about there the tents of Kedar. See, the tents of Kedar were uh, Kedar was black goats. Kadar was black goat. See, that like how do you say that? The tense of Kadar, Kadar, that's not something that you know somebody in 21st century America, you know, would be familiar with. So what is Kadar there? That's actually hair, hair of the uh, of the Bedouins. Hair of the Bedouins. That's uh that was uh, they got that from black goats. That's what the tents of Kadar, the tents of Kadar were. You know, they were uh they were black goats and uh they had lots of uh, they had lots of eloquent uh, black hair like she says there I am black become the O ye daughters of Jerusalem I am black as the tents of Kadar and the tents of Kadar they were black goats like I wrote there 
in my Bible. I write it with a pencil because, you know, I write it with a pencil because, you know, you might want to add or change some things. Like I got that out of one of the commentaries that uh, that I use, like I put down there. You know, those are black goats. You know, they had hair. They had hair of the Bedouins. And that's like what uh, that term means there, just like so I know, like I actually wrote a commentary, you know, on the uh, on the Song of Solomon that I'll publish soon. So things such as that, like I said, if you want to like make notes, I would have definitely used a pencil so you can erase. Because, you know, some commentaries, we're going to go over that well, you know, some commentaries written by man and man is fallible. Some things written in commentaries aren't right. But then sometimes, you know, you just want to add something to it, you know, or make it uh, like uh, make it sound better. You know, make it sound better, maybe more eloquent for your understanding. Or like if you're a preacher, you know, you want to explain that better to people whenever, you know, you get up behind the pulpit. So like use that or a, or a, strong, a strong concordance. That is uh, that is something everybody definitely should have. I, uh, I have that. I have that on com I have that in a hard copy book and as well on the computer. And we're going to go over that as well, like a Bible study software on the computer. But a Strong's Concordance, though, is definitely is definitely uh, recommended because the Strong's has every single word in the Bible, every single word in the Bible. Like if you just want to, like I mentioned there, like Kadar, you know, if you want to, like you are studying the Bible, you see something unusual like the word Kadar there. That's not, you know, very common to, you know, to people in this day and time. You know, you can find that word there in the, in the, in the strong concordance. And, you know, you can find all the other time, you know, that Kadar was mentioned when it's talking about the black goats there that had that very black hair. But the Strong's Concordance, and uh, but obviously, you know, use sound books. Like I said, I know all men are, are, are all men are fallible. No man is infallible. But try to use uh, sound books there, and we'll give you a couple of those. These would uh, these would be books that I would recommend. Uh, that I would highly recommend everybody to have. Like this is by uh, Dr. David Cloud. He's still living. He is still living, by my opinion. He's the greatest living theologian and independent fundamental Baptist. He's been writing for years. If you're familiar, you know, with have been in church a while, you've probably heard of him, you know, in the independent Baptist spectrum. But he is an independent, you know, fundamental Baptist. Everything he does is doctrinal like us. You know, he's pre-trib, you know, pre-millennial. King James all the way. And this is the one-year discipleship course, like this book here. Like, this is especially really good, like, for new converts or, you know, like, in Sunday school classes, especially, like, maybe the teenagers or people in those pre-teen years, you know, that are starting to under things, you know, more of an adult concept. Like, in uh, this here, like, he goes over various topics, you know, like we said, that would be very good, like, for really what anybody should know, but, like, especially a new a new convert, somebody that's just gotten saved, or, you know, like I said, teenagers, you know, preteen people, you want to start teaching them more things, you know, more of an adult concept, like, he talks about repentance, you know, the evidence of salvation, like baptism, you know, like why we believe in immersion, you know, versus like infant baptism, like Protestants, uh, eternal security, like position and practice, you know, like our position on things, like the authority of the King James Bible, etc. Like the law and the New Testament Christian, you know, how the law, you know, like how the law can relate to New Testament Christians, you know, even though we're obviously not under the law anymore. Like a prayer, the armor of God, you know, the church, you know, like the concept of the local church, the proof of the Bible, principles of Bible interpretation. You know, like if you are going to use, you know, like Dr. E.W. Bullinger's Companion Bible, you know, that'd be something good to read to go along with that. Like a knowing God's will, you know, making wise decisions, like the judgment seat of Christ, separation from the world, you know, the test of entertainment, kind of like, you know, I did that video, I believe last week, like about television, the one-eyed God, you know, like if you want to test, you know, is entertainment wholesome, is it something uh, suitable for a Christian to watch? You know, like, you know, like a, like a filthy movies, a filthy music, you know, is something worth watching or listening to. A separation, 
uh, fasting, you know, like something you don't hear a lot about in this day and time, like speaking in tongues, you know, what was biblical tongues, you know, why we don't use tongues anymore, the rapture, like I said, you know, like why we believe, you know, in the pre-trib rapture, like tithing, being wise in your money, like drinking, you know, like we did a video about that as well, like, you know, what does the Bible say about alcohol, like some, you know, social issues like abortion, you know, like why we reject that, evolution, like dressing for the Lord, you know, like dressing modest. So that is certainly very, very good there. Like something else, like the uh, way of life encyclopedia of Bible and of the Bible and Christianity. <clears throat> like this here, like talks about things in the Bible, but then also things like denominations. And watch, you know, like a very, very wide variety here. Like even friends, like I just open up here this phrase and it goes over, you know, like over friendship, you know, like how to be a good friend to somebody in the Lord, like having, you know, godly friends and all. And like a fundamentalism, like, you know, that as well, you know, like fun, like, like I use that terminology, newly evangelicalism, like fundamentalism, you know, versus, you know, the newly evangelicals and you know, like, uh, like things of that nature, then, you know, like people in the Bible, you know, like, uh, like Gabriel, you know, the angel of the Lord, <clears throat> like a Gamaliel, you know, like who was mentioned in the Bible, like uh, all the Bible characters, you know, not just popular ones, you know, but all of them, ones that are only mentioned, you know, a time or two, he, uh, you know, gets all the information that he can about those people. Like I said, other denominations, like, uh, like you know, the Methodist Church, you know, Seventh-day Adventism, you know, like the Roman Catholic Church, you know, has a, like, what they believe. And then also here, like, uh, explore the book. This is uh, by J. Sidlow Baxter. This here can be used as a, uh, as a Bible survey, like if you want to do like an OT survey, Old Testament survey, New Testament survey class. But it's a little deeper than that, though. I would actually probably more so use this as like a theology course. Like I said, you want to read through the Bible. That actually be a really, really good thing to do. Like you want to read through the Bible in a year, you know, like use this, you know, use uh, uh, use this book here. Like it uh, uh, goes along everything here. Like... Uh, like first here, like the poetical books of the Bible, like Job, the Song of Solomon. So he has a section here, like about the poetical books, like an introduction to those books. And then, you know, gets into the book of Job. Like uh, the book of Job in a few different sections. That goes over, you know, like uh, the subject and the method of Job. You know, giving us the uh, the introduction to the to the book and then... You know, in next sections, you know, goes through the contents of the book. Like the second section, he goes through like chapter two and uh, verse number 13, you know, like the uh, the prologue there. And then like in uh, chapter three, you know, he kind of gets into the main, you know, like the main body of the book, like down through, like down through the uh, chapters there of his friends, like the fourth section, like Eli, who, if you know the book there. Like the young man, Eli, who, who defended Job to his friends there. And then like uh, like the fifth section, you know, kind of the end of the book, you know, like in chapter number 38, you know, like the 41, the voice from the whirlwind. Like whenever the, you know, the Lord of the voice came to Job from the whirlwind. So that's uh, a good book there if you are going to like read through the Bible, you know, any time. You know, that is a great, great companion you know, to give you a lot of the good background information about the different books of the Bible. So, like, uh, did that as well. Now, uh, we'll mention a, a few here that we don't, that uh, that I don't have with me. Most of these books I have, but they're, like, in boxes, because, you know, like I said, we've been traveling, raising support, and we're moving in a few months. But, like, uh, Dr. J. Vernon McGee, he is a, uh, he's a good one, a good commentator. As I said, he's also good for, like, an independent fundamental Baptist, like us of the pre-trib, pre-millennial uh, persuasion, because that is the bad thing, like, I'm going to mention some of these here, like, I'll just go ahead now, like, that I do, that I do recommend, like, uh, Matthew Henry, Matthew Poole, Adam Clark, John Wesley, 
and like a lot of the old Puritans, you know, from like the 17, 1800s time frame, and like, you know, the old Arminians, like Adam Clark and John Wesley, uh, they are not pre -tri pre millennial. You know, they look at uh, they look at uh, the end times from like a uh, from a historicist or like a uh, pre tourist position. So that's the bad thing about them. So you know, with that being said, you know, I don't I do recommend their commentaries generally speaking, but I don't recommend you know like all their notes like on the book of Daniel and on the book of Revelation. You know, when it comes to prophecy, because they are often those areas. Also, all of the Green's commentaries. Uh, just about everything he did is the New Testament. He has th the entire New Testament in the book of Daniel, but the book of Daniel is the only uh, is the only uh, <clears throat> book that he has of the Old Testament. And then also like a Haley's Bible book. I have that here, like Haley's Haley's Bible Handbook as well. This is a uh, this would be something kind of more so like I said for maybe like an Old Testament survey, from more so from an Old Testament survey, you know, standpoint, not extremely in depth. Like, this is a smaller book. You can buy this large. If you say this is pretty small, like, this is the book of Amos. Like, uh, like he just gives the, introdu the introduction here, you know, like about Amos. And it mentions Amos' contemporaries. Like, you know, he lived kind of in the same time as, like, Jonah, you know, and Jose. And, like, uh, maybe Elijah, Elisha, and Jose. And then you see here his chapter, you know, contents. Like, this is Amos chapter 1 and 2. Which, you know, Amos is a rather small book, but like this here, like a couple of paragraphs is all chapters one and two is. And like, uh, trying to flip to the next page here. They're kind of sticking together. Yeah, there it is. Like this here is just like the end, just like over here is like the uh, rest of the book of Amos. So I said this is more of a survey type book, not extremely extremely in-depth, but like I said, if you want to read through the Bible, you know, like in a year, that's certainly a, a good tool, or maybe like teach an Old Testament, like an Old Testament, a New Testament survey class with it. Like they also mentioned a Bible study software. This is uh, something that I do recommend for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's more cost-effective. It's more cost-effective. They're not, they're not as expensive, and uh, they are portable, especially, you know, for somebody like me, like a missionary on deputation or, you know, like a traveling preacher or, once again, like somebody like who writes commentaries, you know, like I do. <clears throat> like I do, you know, you just have all the commentaries right there, you know, like on one page. Like this is the Power Bible CD. This is very, very inexpensive. You see the cover there. Just order that directly from their website. Just go to, uh, like you can just search Power Bi PowerBible.com as their website. PowerBible.com or, you know, just search Power Bible CD. <clears throat> and like in this here, like, like it has like Bible dictionaries and encyclopedia. Like also wanted to make mention that like the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. That is also a very, very good resource. Like I said, I know like about Dr. Cloud's encyclopedia. That uh, talks about like a lot of the Bible characters and uh, topics and things of the Bible. Like uh, this here has four topical Bibles talking about different, uh, you know, talk of topical topical subjects. It has four devotionals, like 850 sermons by various people. Of course, it has lots of the commentaries, like this has Matthew Henry, uh, Scott, Adam Clark, John Wesley, Spurgeon, Barnes, Matthew Poole, Burkett Robertson, and a number of the other ones. Like this is mostly the classics, like I mentioned, you know, like the, uh, like the old Puritans or the old Arminians. That's mostly what's on this CD. And then uh, this one here, this is actually an older edition. They have a much newer one now that is more, this is kind of a, one of the more expensive, like the Power Bible. I think that's only about six, six, seven or eight dollars. Can't remember exactly. That's only six, seven or eight dollars though for one CD. Except this is PC Study Bible here. Like, uh, like I said, they have a newer edition. Now, this would be a bit more expensive. This would probably be more like around $100, but it has more stuff on it, though, than you, the uh, the very new version. Like, it has uh, lots of Bible dictionaries, has a uh, Matthew Henry's commentary, the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, has Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown's commentaries, uh, uh, Barnes. Of course, like I said, the new one has a lot, lot more than the older edition that uh, that I have. 
then, like I said, like the study Bible that I had by Dr. Bullinger, this is actually kind of like a, like a lot of his works. He wrote quite a few books. This has a lot of his works on like a commentary he wrote on Revelation, like a, like a number of other uh, various uh, topical things that he wrote about. And so, uh, and that one. And then also, a lot of them are free. Like, you can just go on the internet and find a lot of free ones as well if you don't want to spend any money. You don't have to spend any money now, really. If you have a computer or, like, a cell phone, you don't even really have to spend any money. <clears throat> you know, like, if you want to be a student of the Bible, those are just, you know, things that can help. You know, like, I have them that I study and I write all the time. But, like, uh... <clears throat> Like a BibleHub.com, I know is one that is free. Like that has almost all the commentaries that I mentioned. That has John Gill, who is a very great writer. He's one of the old Puritans, but he's very, very good, very intelligent man. He actually pastored the church that Charles Spurgeon pastored. <clears throat> he pastored it before Spurgeon. He lived like during the 1700s. Like uh, that, like Bible Hub, and that has John Gill, John Wesley, Jameson Faustin Brown, Matthew Poole, uh, Matthew Henry. Like I said, just about has all of you know the more popular, you know, like uh, you know people from that time frame, Adam Clark, you know, Puritan, and like the old Arminian uh, writers, Kalich and uh, Kell and DeLeach. So. Uh, like Bible Hub in itself has a lot, has a lot there. Just that, and also, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, uh, like Bible so no Esor, that's it, Esor. Like Esor too has a lot of things. That's very popular. I've used that a little bit. I personally don't use that on a regular basis, but that is popular and that is all free. Like Esor, like just to mention that, that is uh, that is gonna like Esor too. Like Esor, you can get on the internet or you can download the app. Same with Bible Hub. I should have mentioned that as well. Like if you have like a cell phone or a tablet, you know you can just like download like a Bible Hub app. You can just look for it. And uh, there, there are other ones, like if you just want to search yourself, but those are uh, the couple there. Like I said, that's the great thing about technology. You know, you can be a full-fledged student of the Bible, you know, and not even, uh, you know, and not even really spend any money in this time. And also, i I'll cut just a couple more here. Like things that I have, a couple of my personal favorites, I guess, that I should say. Some of the hard copy commentaries, some of the hard copy commentaries, too, that I have. Like this is a this is a one called the one volume Bible commentary edited by J R Dumelow. Like if you wanted to look this up, you would. Uh, yeah, this is one of this is one of the older, for like late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds commentaries. If you wanted to buy this, you'd probably have to buy this used. You might be able to buy it new. I'm not sure. I bought mine used. But uh, used would be cheaper anyway. Like if you went to eBay or like thrift books, you could probably find this. Like I said, just search it in there if you're interested. Like if you're... Like, if you are a hard copy person, a lot of people just aren't accustomed, like, to reading on the internet or Bible study software. Some people like the hard copy stuff, like I do sometimes as well. Like, this is the one volume Bible commentary by J.R. Dumelo. Like, I, I, bought, like I said, I bought this used, but it's one of my favorite commentaries. I actually found this at a thrift store here in Alabama just about a couple of months ago. I bought it for the pastor of our church who didn't have it. <clears throat> And then this one is just called the Abingdon Bible Commentary because it is published by Abingdon. The Abingdon Bible Commentary as well. It's kind of the same scenario. This is mainly from scholars from like the late 1800s to the early 1900s. But this is a little bit more sectional, a little bit more of the uh, sectional uh, type uh, type writing. Like I can show you here, like this is like the book of, uh, to give you an idea of what this one looks like. This isn't necessarily verse by verse, kind of more of a section by section commentary. Like uh, here, like it says, uh, starting chapter 7, and this goes verses 1 to 10. And then you have like a paragraph here about verses 1 to 10. And then starting here at the very bottom, like where my thumb is, it goes verses 11 to 17. Like all the way to here to the next page, and it goes verses 18 to 35 with another section. So... Like I said, that's more of a sectional, a sectional type commentary, you know, that goes by about 10 verses or so. And then this one, this is called the Interpreter's One Volume Commentary of the Bible. This is also published by a Bingdon, same publisher as the last one. <clears throat> Said this one kind of well with the other two. You know, this was written in the late 1800s, early 1900s. You would probably have to... Uh, which I'd be cheaper anyway. You know, you might be able to, if you can just search this, you might be able to find it new. But 
but probably though you could find it used though, which would be cheaper. Like I said on eBay, you know, thrift books, things of that nature. Kind of similar, kind of similar, but a little bit uh, to the to the last one. Like here, this kind of goes by a few verses. This style is very similar to my commentaries. Like uh, like here, we have a uh, starting chapter thirteen. Like uh, like you kind of get an introductory section here to chapter number thirteen. And then, like he, they explain verses chapter thirteen, verses one to three, section here. Then also like a little map there, you know, to give you an idea of where they are. They are, and then you have like chap chapter thirteen, verses four to five, like a paragraph with some commentary there. So, so those are some uh, those are some good hard copy options. You know, if you are a hard copy person, like I said, those are some of the older ones. Like, um, obviously, newly commentaries that I wrote now, you know, that you would find in Christian bookstores and all written by newly evangelicals like John Piper, you know, or John MacArthur. You know, they might have some good stuff, you know, but they are very, very newly evangelical. So, uh, those are some things there with uh, commentaries. And, uh, like false teachers, you know, beware of false teachers. Like, like what David Cloud says about false teacher. The false teacher takes verses out of context and uses isolated verses to overthrow the clear teaching of the Bible as a whole. And see, just lastly here, no, we should have a desire to learn. You know, these books and all, I know that seems very boring to some people. It's boring to me. You know, even when I was a very young preacher boy. When I surrender to preach, the one regret that I have in my Christian life is not becoming a student of the Word of God at an earlier age, which I had started uh, started studying to become a student of the Bible at an earlier age, like in Psalm one nineteen eleven, uh, like it's actually uh, like a verse there that's in our that's in our um, uh, pledge of allegiance to the Christian flag. It says, "Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee." Let's have that desire, Amen. Not to sin against God, to be a good student of his word. And obviously the preacher and teacher, you know, they should be a constant student of the word. You know, things that I've said, you know, that everybody should be a student of the word. But especially a preacher, somebody has been called to preach and a teacher as well. You teach Sunday school, like it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2, apt to teach. That's a qualification for a man of God. See, the King James Bible is full of fruit. That's all it is. I mean, you can't go wrong with it. Well, is it worth my time? Yeah. If there's one thing that you will not regret in your life, it's going to be a student of the Word of God. Said my probably biggest regret that I have in my life is not being a student of the Word of God sooner. See, the King James Bible is full of fruit. It was used by John Owen, George Whitfield, Matthew Henry, John Wesley, Adoniram Judson, Jonathan Edwards, David Brainerd, Isaac Watts, John Newton, William Carey, Hudson Taylor, Charles Spurgeon, John Bunyan, John Gill, Isaac Bacchus. John Leland, Richard Baxter, G. Campbell Morgan, J. Wilbur Chapman, D. L. Moody, Fanny Crosby, Bob Jones Sr., and J. Frank Norris. It was used in the Puritan revivals, the Great Awakenings, and the Baptist revivals in the U.S. Amen. So the Word of God, just full of fruit there. Just our thought for uh, today. We've been a little longer than I thought. Our devotional time there wasn't long, but I know I, I uh, explained all the books and the Bible study software, but I believe that was certainly men of God. Certainly it was a help and encouragement to you out there to be a better student of the Word. Um, <clears throat> like I didn't mention it when we first started, but if you want to contact me, I can help you with anything. You know, you got any questions about books, some authors, I'd be more than happy to help you. You can find us on YouTube, our YouTube page, well, you know, you really can't contact me on YouTube, but our YouTube page is, uh, my YouTube page is Dr. R.T. Cooper, if you came across this on Facebook. But then if you came across this on YouTube, though, my Facebook name is R.T. Cooper, Ph.D. Once again, that's R.T., my first two initials, Cooper, Ph.D. If you want to find me on Facebook, you can uh, friend me there, send me a message, or if you want to email me, my email address is according to the word at outlook.com. Once again, that is according to the word at outlook.com. According to the word at outlook.com. Be more than happy to help you in a way we can. Got a prayer request, something you want us to uh, mention on the air? Then, uh, you know, like a prayer request sometime to get some of the brethren and sister and listen to us to pray. Be more than happy to do that. It's so, uh, appreciate you tuning in this evening. Hopefully, it was a blessing to you. I have a, you can tell I have a great desire for people to be students of the word of God. So then what's needed, amen, to be more students, the, for people to be students of the word of God, need more believers 
informed and educated with God and His Word. Can't go wrong with it. And we will see you here Sunday. We will uh, continue our Sunday morning series here. Uh, Sunday series here, Sunday morning and Sunday evening, being the uh, continue the second chapter of Psalm. Start there in Psalm 2. Be starting in Psalm 2 and going through... Uh, and uh, going through at least some of Psalm 3 through Sunday evening. So we'll see you then. Hopefully we're blessed to you here this evening. We'll close in a word of prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the kindness of sin, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to open up your word and go across the cyberways. Thank you, Lord, for your people. And I thank those that have had tuned in. Just pray and bless them, Lord. You know our heart's desire just for them to, to grow, to succeed. That's all we want to do, Lord God, is for these people to succeed in their Christian life and all that they endeavor. We just love them, Lord God. Love all our listeners, Lord God. Just pray you'd bless them. Just uh, use us all, Lord, for your on your glory. Make us that believer we ought to be, that student of your word that we ought to be, Lord. Just lead and guide and direct, Lord, in the way that you have us do on our hearts and lives, Lord. For it's in Christ's name that we do humbly pray. Amen and amen. All right, there, there, at the end of our prayer, we had something pop up there. I apologize for that. But um, it was great having you here this uh, this uh, Thursday evening, and we'll see you Sunday. Thanks for listening. I am Dr. Cooper.